Part of our James Street Spikes Tongue Lenten teaching series for 2021. And this evening, we're going to be discussing the topic mental health and cure, healthy ways of coping with stress. And our presenter this evening is going to be Mr. Lennox Rochester. But before we get to actually introducing him, I want us to just spend a few moments preparing ourselves for this very important discussion. And there's a particular hymn that we all know so well. It is well with my soul. And a particular verse goes like this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. With this hymn comes one of the most heart-rendering stories in all the annals of hymnody. The author Horatio Spatford was a Presbyterian layman from Chicago. He had established a very successful legal practice as a young businessman and was also a devout Christian. Among his close friends were several evangelists, including the famous Dwight L. Moody, also from Chicago. Spafford's fortune evaporated in the wake of the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. Having invested heavily in real estate along Lake Michigan's shoreline, he lost everything overnight in a saga reminiscent of the biblical story of Job. His son died a short time before his financial disaster, but the worst was yet to come. Hemologists Kenneth Obeck tells the story. Desiring rest for his wife and four daughters, as well as wishing, wishing to join and assist Moody and his musician Ira Sankey in one of their campaigns in Great Britain, Spatford planned a European trip for his family in 1873. In November of that year, due to an unexpected last minute business development, he had to remain in Chicago, but sent his wife and four daughters on ahead as scheduled on the SSS Ville de Havre. He expected to follow in a few days. On November 22nd, the ship was struck by the Lockhearn, an English vessel, and sank in 12 minutes. Several days later, the survivors were finally landed at Cardiff, Wales, and Mrs. Batford cabled her husband, saved alone. Spatford immediately left to join his wife. This hymn is said to have been penned as he approached the area of the ocean, thought to be where the ship carrying his daughters had sunk. Indeed, this hymn, with all of the attendant circumstances, really speaks to this evening's topic. How do you cope with stress? Certainly the hymn writer had a lot of stress to deal with because of the many issues where it seemed as if his life was falling apart all around him. But in the midst of it, he was able to say, it is well with my soul. Our opening hymn is, it is well with my soul. Well 
Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. I was saying, I, I, but I'll say it again. It is well with my soul, and I trust it is well with your soul as well. Are you hearing me? We are hearing you, yes. Yes, praise the Lord. And um, I pray that we can all say that despite all the challenges that we are going through, uh, with COVID and whatever else, that we can all say it is well with our souls because we keep our eyes focused on God, the God who gave us Jesus Christ to teach us how to live. Jesus Christ came to show us how to, to demonstrate to us how to live a spiritually guided life in a physical world and come out victorious. And uh, therefore, let us, let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, all-knowing God, all-powerful God, all-loving God, you are good and only good. And we turn to you this day, thanking you for all that you have done in our lives. Indeed, Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for family. We thank you for friends. We thank you for our brothers and sisters walking together. At this journey of life from birth until death, this journey of life now, this moment from the wilderness through rough times to the cross, but a journey, Lord, that leads us to victory, life over death and over all the troubles that we meet. And we think this way, Lord, in this season of Lent, journeying through the wilderness, journeying to the cross. But it doesn't end at the cross, this life. There is resurrection. And all we pray, Lord, that 
what we learn this evening as we meet again to, to hear from our brother. We pray, Lord, that we will learn how we can come out triumphant in this journey. As we gather here, we know you are with us. We acknowledge, Lord, that the journey offers joys. And yes, as we have noted in our flyers, it also has emotional roller coasters. But these things, these challenges are not meant to defeat us or to destroy us, but to strengthen us and to cause us to rely, O oh God, on you more and to reveal to us your power and strength to deliver us. So, Father, we are thankful that we can meet like this, even though miles apart because of circumstances, we are together in Christ. Jesus himself said, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it is in spirit and knowing, oh God, that you are everywhere present and there's no place where you are not. That we can say and believe that we are together and on this occasion to learn how to navigate the pathways for health and faith and come out victorious. We thank you for our teacher tonight. He's no stranger to us, Brother Lennox Rochester. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless him as he speaks to us and as he shares from his storehouse of experiences and, and wisdom that we will hear something that will help us on this path, this journey of life. So, Lord, we thank you for being with us. We are ready to hear from you. And we acknowledge, as we always do, that we are not our own. We all belong to you. You tell us, Lord, even now what you would have us do as we seek to navigate new pathways for health and faith and coming out as winners, bringing glory to your name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you very much, Brother Harry. Let me once again thank you all for joining us this evening for our Lenten teaching service as we have deeper life encounters. Certainly this evening, we are going to be tackling a very important topic as we look at mental health and care, as we look at ways that we can cope with stress. Now, notice that I was very careful not to to, to welcome you this evening, because that is not my task. That task belongs to Sister Lois. So let me invite Sister Lois Innes to welcome all of us to this evening's teaching session. Sister Lois. Thank you, Brother Craig. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. I bid you welcome to this second session in our Lenten teaching series under the overarching theme Navigating New Pathways for Health and Faith, Conquering the Emotional Roller Coasters of Life. This evening's focus will be on mental health and care, as Brother Craig would have mentioned, and healthy ways of coping with stress. And it will be presented by Mr. Lennox Rochester. So Mr. Rochester, I extend to you a warm welcome on behalf of the James Street Spikes Down Circuit and we certainly look forward to your presentation on this topic, which is most relevant in this current COVID-19 environment. Mental health, care, and coping with stress is something 
that was or should have been important to us and be, be normal, but it has certainly been brought into sharp focus over the last year. I recognize and extend a welcome to our Bishop and Superintendent Minister, Reverend Derek Richards, and our ministers within the circuit and any other ministers joining from the South Caribbean district and beyond. To our host this evening, Brother Craig Kinch, welcome. I know that Brother Kinch will ably navigate us through this evening's proceedings. To my fellow circuit steward, Sister Sophia Harthaway, welcome. And to my fellow brothers and sisters throughout the circuit, the South Caribbean district and friends joining us within our shores, regionally and internationally, I bid you all welcome. And trust that this session will not only be, be enlightening and, and informative, but would encourage us to do a self-assessment of our own mental health and stress levels, and to act boldly and fearlessly to close any gaps identified. May also equip us to help our families, friends, and others, others facing any challenges. Welcome again, and God bless. Thank you very much, Sister Lois, for your very warm welcome extended to us all. And as you would have mentioned, we do have persons joining us from across the James Street Spike Stone circuit. We also have persons joining us from other circuits here on island in Barbados. But we also have persons joining us from across the South Caribbean district, and even persons who are joining us from other locations, including the US and the US Virgin Islands. So we want to welcome all of you this evening to our teaching session. As was mentioned by Brother Harry, this evening we have an astute professional joining us, a mental health professional, to tackle the topic. And it is my pleasure to introduce Brother Lennox Rochester. Brother Lennox is a qualified occupational therapist and currently heads the occupational therapy department at the psychiatric hospital. He has over 20 years experience in this field. He is passionate about assisting persons to return to some level of effective functioning in their daily living activities. Mr. Rochester is a graduate of Brunel University, London. He has served in various capacities on a number of organizations in the medical field. He is a former vice president of Barbados Association of Mental Health. He is also the former chairman of the Paramedical Professions Council. He is also a former president of the Association of Caribbean Occupational Therapists. And this is just to name a few of some of the associations of which he has been a part of their leadership. Brother Rochester has been a conference speaker, both locally and throughout the Caribbean. He has facilitated training sessions for public and private sector entities, as well as with church communities such as our own. He is a father of two children and the husband of one charming wife, Kathy. He lives by the motto, with God, all things are possible. Join me in welcoming our speaker, Brother Lennox, and we invite you now to come and share with us your presentation. After you have presented, we will open the floor for questions. At that point in time, we'll give directions as to how we'll take questions. Very well, sir. We welcome okay. you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure to be with you. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, technology has created such opportunities for us. So we need to make use of them as they are available. Now, Craig, I want to thank you for your opening song. It's very apt, right? Because indeed we are dealing with a crisis. And the coronavirus pandemic has created an increased awareness of mental health concerns, as it has been stressful for people. Fear and anxiety about a new disease and what could happen has been overwhelming and has been causing some strong emotions in adults and children. This also coupled with the public health actions such as social, phys social and physical distancing, 
can lead to people feeling lonely and can lead to increasing stress and anxiety. Hence, and I want to stress this, it is necessary to formulate personal, community, or even national health and self-care plans to address this. So my hope is that at the end of this, each individual sets out a plan for his or her own life, right? Now, self-care is important in these times when you're feeling particularly disconnected or out of sorts because it helps you to relax and focus on doing something kind for yourself. Now, at this point, I want to cover this whole presentation with a very um, well-known um, piece of scripture. Um, Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Meditate on these things. For me, this passage brings encouragement, hope, protection, and peace. And I, and I want us to focus on these things because the way things are going, everything is uncertain except the certainties of the Bible that God will never leave us. And if we pray, he will be with us. And that's critically important. Okay, now, so let's get into the whole thing about mental health. What is mental health? Mental health can be de defined as a state of well being in which the individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stress and demands of life, can work productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to his or her own um, community. Now, the US Surgeon General has, he has a, another definition, which I find very, very interesting and useful, so I will share that with you. All right, and he describes mental health as the successful performance of mental functions, resulting in productive activities, fulfilling relationships with other people, and the ability to adapt to change and cope with adversity. What goes on to say from early childhood until late life, mental health is the springboard of thinking, communication skills, learning, emotional growth, resilience, and self-esteem. Now, this definition I find to be quite apt because it, it gives three major tenets. Um, self, basically who you are and whose you are. Others, your, your responsibility to others and meeting the demands of life, which all of us have got to do at one point or another and which can be challenging for most of us. Now, I want to say here that mental health is more than the absence of mental illness. And it occurs on a continuum. It's, it's really not a fixed state. And people can move up and down the continuum regularly. So let, let's look at this. This is a sort of a scale. At one end is optimum well-being. And as you go up that scale, and the function of persons is gradually impacted until you get to the end of the scale where the person may be experiencing severe symptoms. Now, it's important to know that each of us go up that scale, up and down that scale daily. Now, within the recent weeks, quite a few of us are closer to the top end or the red end of the scale than we would want to be because of the uncertainty, the stress, the fear, because fear of the unknown is, is very, very, very prevalent. Okay, now, but we will speak about them things later. It is important also to note that a guy by the name of Dr. Brock Chisholm, who was the first director general of the World Health Organization said, and I quote, there can be no true health without mental health. It, mental health is critical, it's important. Now, 
the coronavirus pandemic has brought it into a, a steeper focus and that we have to work at addressing. Okay, now, pandemics can be stressful. But coping with stress in healthy ways will make you and the people you care about and your community stronger. Right? So let's discuss stress. What is stress? One definition of stress is the body's physical, mental, and chemical response to circumstances that frighten, excite, confuse, or irritate you. Let me say that again. The body's physical, mental, and chemical response to circumstances that frighten. Think about COVID, because we're going to place the emphasis on COVID because it's affecting everybody all over the world at the same time. That although we bring in some general, um, some general characteristics of stress as well, right? So that circumstances that frighten, that excite. And some people are excited by this in, in, in very interesting ways that confuse and believe you me, there is a lot of confusion around. There's confusion with all the information and the misinformation and the not knowing what to do or not knowing what happens next. And the irritation, there's that around. We're becoming increasingly irritable. So each and every one of us has got to take a stop of our personal stressors. That's the first step, or personal stressors. Now, some information on what stress does, some general information on stress. How you feel? Anxious, aggressive, apathetic, which is basically you neither here or there, bored, tired, depressed, frustrated, guilty, irritable, lacking in confidence, tense, nervous, and lonely, these are some of the terms that can describe how you feel. How you behave, have accidents, because your concentration and your attention is, is diminished. Take drugs to make yourself feel comfortable. Get emotional, eat too much or too little. Drink and smoke excessively. You may use incoherent speech. You may also be involved with nervous laughter, especially in uncomfortable situations. You may be very, very restless and they may also be trembling or tremors. How you think, difficulty in making decisions because your head is not as clear as it could be. Less creative in solving problems. You can be forgetful, hypersensitive to criticism. And I am sure some of you may be seeing some of these things in your household now that everybody is particularly at home and personal space may be invaded. Poor concentration, poor organization of work and last, because this whole thing is, a, is confusing to the best of us, right? What happens to your body? Increased heart rate and blood pressure, dryness of mouth, sweating, pupils dilated, hot and cold spells, a lump in the throat, sometimes numbness, butterflies in the stomach, and these are all the, the signs of anxiety. What happens to your health? Asthma, chest and back pains, coronary heart disease, diarrhea, and, and what this means is the, the prolonged stress can be, cause these to develop or the stress can exacerbate these. Diarrhea, Faintness and dizziness, dyspepsia, which is um, upset stomach, frequent urination, headaches and migraine, neuroses, nightmares, insomnia. Now, throughout this presentation, you will probably hear a lot about sleep because sleep is critical to, to man's functioning and health. Psychoses, and, and these are major mental illnesses, skin complaints, ulcers, loss of sexual interest. How does it affect your work? Increased absenteeism, poor communication and industrial relations, less a lesser commitment, higher accident rate, more antagonism because everybody is caught up with their own thoughts and very, very concerned about themselves, less creativity, less concern for fellow workers, less job satisfaction, and poor productivity. So stress affects every, every 
aspect of human functioning. Okay, now it's also important to note that stress during an infectious outbreak can sometimes cause the following changes in sleep and eating patterns. Now, sleep is critical because when we sleep and we go into deep sleep, the body produces something called tryptophan, which causes our central nervous system. It, it, it helps to repair the central nervous system. So if you lose sleep continually, or if your sleep patterns are impacted severely, that can lead to, that can lead to major health problems, all right? Eating patterns. I don't know, have you noticed that because you're in the house, more constantly, you are munching a little bit more? Don't answer that yet. We must have our snacks, we must be, and we are increasing. No, we're not exercising and doing anything, and our midriffs are increasing. We need to, we need to watch that. There are also things, difficulty concentrating, and we spoke about that. They can be the worsening of chronic health problems. Hypertension can be, become um, exacerbated. Diabetes can become exacerbated. People who have breathing problems, chest problems with, with, with the congestive cardiac failure and stuff, those problems can be exacerbated by stress. There's as we said, also increased use of tobacco, alcohol, and other substances just to get through is brought to my attention recently that there has been an increase of people just drinking cough syrup out of no real cough or anything, but just keeping cough syrup to get to sleep. Now, found out also that lots of people are staying up later at night, they're watching movies and whatever else, trying to pass the time. They're waking up later during the day, some of them are sleeping during the day. So you, you've got what's called an inverted sleep pattern and that's creating some challenges because it's affecting the way people function. We need to look at that. Then you, a pandemic can also create the onset of mental health conditions and these may be some, some conditions related to neurotic illnesses or maybe even psychotic illnesses. What I have noticed is that some people are displaying increased suspicion. I wouldn't go to say paranoia, and it seems to be fueled by what, what we call um, all the information that we're getting and what, what's the name you call it? The conspiracy theories. So quite a few people are buying into those and they're, they're getting increasingly, not only suspicious of others, suspicious of products, su suspicious of services. So that is something that we need to watch. And I would say here now, it is important to seek proper information. All right, we'll talk about information overload a little bit later on as well, right? Now, everyone reacts to stressful situations differently. How we respond to the COVID-19 season can, be ten, can depend on your background, your social support from family and friends, your financial situation, and need we say more about that, your own health and emotional background, the community you live in, and perhaps a host of other factors that are being revealed daily. Many changes can and have happened as a result of COVID-19 and the ways we have tried to contain its spread can affect anyone, right? People who may respond more strongly to the stress of this season can include the following. People who are high risk, older persons and persons with underlying health conditions. I visited a polyclinic today and there were some persons there, I think over 70s, and there was a sense of major panic. And, and, and interestingly enough, lots of the conversations were, girl, they're, they're, oh, girl, boy, I, I get it. I don't know. I don't know what can happen, but I get it. I don't know what it can do to me, but I get it. And then it ends off with, 
a trusting God, which is what they should do. But mind you, the confusion, the anxiety is real because we do not know. And as I will, I'll talk a little bit later on about the whole thing of missing the normal, all right? Because as human beings, we like things to be predictable. We do. We may say not. But as soon as we can't predict something or something is not clear to us, we, we start to get anxious and we start to get worried. We need to put our trust in God, those of us who know God, and, and know that he is immutable. He does not change. And that is the underscore that he underscore that he does not change. His promises will not change. Okay. Um, children and teens as well. And you would have heard recently about the, the condition with the little girl. Um, suffered and, and that's as a result it's affecting children very very differently and that is a evolving situation that being looked at essential workers who work in the food industry right they can be stressful i mean now most restaurants and stuff are closed and all that but that's still a concern frontline workers such as healthcare providers and first responders things like I, I was in the supermarket recently and it suddenly occurred to me that the cashiers and the retail clerks, and that, they are very, very vulnerable because they're dealing with so many different people and nobody knows, right? At, at work, we have been encouraged to treat everyone as if they're COVID positive. And, and that means you've got to take all precautions and, and whatever else. And because this, this is new to us, some people are still learning how to manage their mask properly, how to manage their san sanitizer. And, and this is an ongoing thing. And one slip, one innocent slip may cause problems. People have to go to the supermarket to get food, right? A lot of the lines I've seen, there has been no real social distancing practicing, so people are vulnerable. We have to be aware of these things, right? People who have existing mental health conditions may respond stronger because they have fears as well. They have fears, they have concerns, and, and let's face it, services, all health services have been disrupted. So people may have longer appointments, People have fears of running out of medication, not being able to reach the persons who they can speak to and, and receive information from. So, so that can cause people to become problematic. Something we also need to look at, people who use substances or have substance use disorders, they may react differently to stresses as well, because very often it's stress and distress that have led them into the situation they're in. And that may very well have be become their default system and, and through no fault of their own and a, and a situation which they can't control, they might find themselves getting back into stressful behaviors and getting back into drug use. People who have lost their jobs or have had their work reduced or have had major changes to their employment. Perhaps there's some of you in the audience. I don't know. But we are all concerned about ourselves, maintaining our families, maintaining our, our livelihoods and maintaining our lifestyles. And, and those are legitimate concerns, all right? And as we continue with, with the lockdown preventative um, strategies, we, we are getting lower and lower monies and people are asking what we will do. You know, and, and that's real. People who have disabilities or developmental delays, and some people like that may very well live on their own. What happens to those persons when there's the lockdown, when they can't get out? You know, even if we're suffering with a broken arm, which is 
which can be considered a temporary situation and something happens, you worry about if something happens, how will they get by? So these people, there's increased stress and this increased stress can also lead or exacerbate the, the, the existing condition. So these are things we need to look at. People who are socially isolated from others, including people who live alone or living in isolated areas. And that is real. You know, the people who perhaps live alone, they, they don't socialize a lot with other people and, and, and they will have their own stresses. Sometimes we tend not to think about them because they may not be part of our circle. We may not see them very often and whatever else, but they too have stresses and concerns which may be exacerbated by this, right? People who experience homelessness, who are experiencing homelessness, whether it's through their fall or not, that is a major stressful situation. People who may live in group settings. Now, I, I often wonder what happens where you have, and I, I will not call any district, but where there, there are districts where the houses are relatively small and you have large families and people are not allowed to come out. That, that whole personal space thing can be a problem and, and that can increase the stress and the, the, the increased stress may lead to increase in aggressive behaviors. Now, there's evidence that anger related behaviors are on the rise and this then leads to our next, next category, people experiencing domestic abuse because that's the next thing that comes about. And that's a very, very, very difficult thing. And people may seem or feel quite hopeless because they cannot get help, right? Now, and, and th th those are not all the areas, but those are some that we can identify now. It's important to know that common work-related factors that can add stress during a pandemic. For example, concern about the risk of being exposed to the virus at work. All of us who are on the front line have that concern because you just do not know. And one of the greatest fears is bringing it home. And, and I want to stress the, the, the things about taking off your clothes when you get into the house. We don't know about being offensive or anything. Take them off, put them in the wash, put them in, in the laundry. I, I certainly keep a, um, a, a can of spray in my car. I spray my shoes and, and clothes when before you get in the car and I keep one in the garage and I spray before you come in the house because I am not bringing this thing home knowingly to my wife, right? Now, people also have concerns about taking care of personal family needs while working because their needs, like, like tomorrow, I think the more is a payday here in the country and, and most of the time you work pretty long hours and, and those are concerns. You, you, you know, they can, in, you, your stress can increase when you're not sure what time you're going to be able to get to the supermarket, how you're going to pay bills and all that. So these are things that you need to have a good plan about. Managing a different workload. Some jobs have been changed to accommodate hours, number one, for safety sake, and also because they have been reduced productivity and whatever else, and change can always be stressful. And that stress, that stress upon stress, because for people you won't keep the job, your, your job changes, the demands of the job, and that increases your, your stress levels until you are able to get used to it and manage, right? Then there are things like lack of access to tools and equipment needed to perform the job. And the, the, whatever those tools may be, maybe they may be protective clothing. That's a, that's a, a, a concern. If, thing, if the things run out, then what happens? How can you effectively perform, you know, perform the job and, and protect yourself, right? And then there, there, there's the, the whole thought about feeling that you're not contributing enough to the work 
or guilt about not being on the on the front line. And there are persons who are quite stressed about, I wish I could do more because they see the pressure that's on other people. You know, so so that and 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 that is not necessarily a jealous and envy thing, but it's more from a compassionate standpoint. Now, then you have things about uncertainty about the future of your workplace or your employment. You know, I, I know um, within the last three weeks or so, lots of persons' stress levels went up when there was talk about pensions and gratuities. You know, a lot of people became very, very fearful and very concerned. And, and there was a talk, I, I, I don't know, but I know nothing has been said, um, nothing has been said definitively, but that's a concern to people, right? But that's not anything that we can control. So you have to find peace of mind somehow and, and believe that all will be well. Now, learning new communication tools and dealing with technical difficulties, that can be stressful. Zoom can be a stressful thing sometimes for whatever reason it works now, the volume works, whatever. Sometimes the headphones don't work. Sometimes you can't get on, sometimes you get knocked off and, and, and that can be frustrating for other people. Now, and, and the whole thing about communication and I will point this out to you, all right? Everybody is wearing masks. It is very, very difficult to read facial expression. So what do you have to do? You have to develop other ways and means of reading, quote unquote, the individual. And that may mean looking at the person's brow, for foreign, for foreign and whatever else, looking at the person's shoulders for, and, and watching the shoulders, which indicates mood, but you have to develop other ways of reading body language simply because the mask occludes the smile and everything else. You, If you can see the person's eyes, you can look at that. So that's, a, you know, developing new ways of communi communicating. Now, I am beginning to think that the handshake is rapidly becoming obsolete. It is now the elbow bump or the foot bump. That is something we have to learn, all right? And last, but by no means least, adapting to a different workspace or work schedule. Critical. As I said before, sometimes we do not like change, but change is trust upon us. And the quicker we adapt, the easier it is and the less stressful it will become, okay? Now, Let's look at some healthy ways to cope with stress in, during this COVID. Number one, know the COVID-19 hotline number. So you can call for information. And that number is 536-4500. And there, there's a lot of information you can get from there. If you need somebody to talk with, they can put you on to that, to that person, set up a, a session for you or tell you, Tele mental health or, or um, first aid in mental health just to talk through things, and that's important. Now, next we take care of your emotional health. Now, this is this is very, very important. And, and key part of that is manage your thoughts. All right. Why is it important to manage your thoughts? So let's look at a, a, let's look at the a, a biblical thing. As a man thinketh in his heart. So is he, right? There's, there's a statement that says, thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become behaviors, behaviors become habits, habits become character, character becomes destiny. So it is critical to manage your thoughts because if you do not manage your thoughts, they can take you somewhere where you don't necessarily want to be. Now, try this one for size. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. 
Let me say that again. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. And, and basically this emphasizes that thoughts create, I, I think there was a, I think he was an Asian leader or something who says man becomes, man eventually becomes his thought, something like that. It's important to think clearly and respond to the urgent needs to protect yourself and your family. There's, there's three words that we often use Think, feel, act. And, and think means you, you process the situation as much as what think about your response and, and the consequences. Feel relates to the whole emotion of it, what you are feeling, what the other person is, is feeling, what you would like to be feeling, what the other person or persons would like to be feeling, and then acting appropriately in your best interest, but not violating the rights of the other person. And that's a whole mouthful, right? Now, expect there's a thing, feel free to feel your feelings. Sometimes we tend to feel guilty about having certain feelings, all right? And we, we, we develop the thought, oh man, I, I, might, I must be weak for thinking that way, all right? Experiencing stress and the feelings associated with stress are not a sign of weakness, but they're, they're a sign of reality because you are, you are in a situation. The thing is though, to find a proper trustworthy sounding board and someone who would respect your feelings so that you can brainstorm with that person, okay? now. You're still on strategies and how to deal with stress. Is that time, is it great time now to sit and think about that to-do list you've been avoiding? All right? And, and basically, all the things that you had planned to do that you have not done, this is time to set that list out, prioritize, set yourself whatever goes, and, and just go and do it quietly and quietly and consistently, right? Now, it's time to get things out of your mind, all right? And the mind, <clears throat> I know people have all sorts of things with this, but I want, I want to give you a definition of what the mind is. It's the element of a person which enables them to be aware of the world and their experience. The thing and the feel is the faculty of consciousness and thought. That's that's. That's the mind. And we know the battle is for the mind because when that gets confused, then your, your conscious thought and everything is confused. But it's important to get things out on paper and that can be satisfying on its own. You have to try this. There are things that you're, you're concerned about and that you are ruminating about and they're all flying around your head. But from the time you start to write them down, they take a shape and a form, and you can then look at them, sort them out, process them, whether you organize them or whatever, but you are taking an active role, and that's an active stress. That's an active stress approach. You're taking an active role into dealing with them. All right? Now, and, and you, it's important to start on small tasks. For example, I will get out of bed at eight o'clock every morning. Because one, one of the things, there are some things when you're not at work and you're at home and it's locked down, you, you, you tend not to want to get out of bed. And then that sets the tone for the rest of your day. And that's a, that's a small thing. It helps to eat, give you a checkpoint to start from, right? It's important though to change your, and I go back to this, it's important to change your thinking. We, we call it cognitive restructuring because in difficult situations, we can be very negative. But it's important to change your, change your thinking and find positive ways of, of looking at things and of approaching things, right? Now, 
take breaks from watching, reading, or listening to news stories. It is critical. You will reach a saturation point, and if you try to go beyond that point, you will totally confuse yourself. Hearing and seeing things about the pandemic repeatedly can be upsetting and mentally exhausting. Take breaks. Make it a regular habit of stepping away from your computer and smartphone from time to time. When returning online, please focus on information from reputable sources. There's lots of information. I have never seen so many experts yet until the genesis of COVID. Everybody is an expert of every, on everything. And what they've done, they've confused some of us more. But like I said before, that the, the, the persons who are displaying signs of increased suspicion and all that, that has come from this, right? Um, you don't have to take in everything produced by a 24-7 news cycle. You don't. If you're feeling overwhelmed by everything that's going on, try to stop what you're doing and focus on your breath. And this is something we call, this relates to mindfulness, and it means taking time away from worrying because the reality, the reality is, the reality is, um, worrying, you are thinking and you're living something in the future, which we know is totally impractical and impossible. Meditating, its purest form, I am not talking about the aum and all that, that weird stuff. Meditating, you are actually thinking about your current situation and you're formulating ways of dealing with it appropriately. Okay, and that's the purest form of, of medication. And what 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 take the taking time to think away from worrying and negative feelings will help you to slow down and recenter yourself. And recenter and rebalancing is, is key. You know, getting getting your balance back, right? We all have to employ intentionally employ coping strategies. Put practice strategies in place that work for you in times of stress, and these can include getting enough rest and finding respite, engage in physical activity, and staying in contact with family and friends with the appropriate social distancing. Cooking meals from scratch is a satisfactory, satisfying activity, right? That's one. Find no recipes in books or online. Use even TV program, apps around what others are doing for meals and make, you know, make extras for leftovers, especially in these times of, of, of you know, Titan measures. And, and that what that does, that gives you a sense of accomplishment because you've shared with, not, you've shared with another person and you feel good about yourself and you've actually added value to that person's life. Um, there are things like taking care of plants and, and the garden and stuff like that. Those things are important, right? Take care of your body, self-care. Take deep breaths, stretch. As I said before, meditate. Stress is negative thinking. Meditation is positive thinking. Eat healthy, well-balanced meals on schedule. As I also said before, there's the tendency to want to snack, to want to eat, because somehow when we get bored, we, we eat comfort foods. We, we have to watch that. And this is this is the time now for discipline. Right? This is the time for discipline and, and you know, discipline in your self-care. Exercise regularly to whatever, even if you've got one step in your house, you can exercise. What's that? I, I went around my, I have a centerpiece that I've come to talk. I, I walk around that. I walk up the stairs. I stretch I stretch on the stairs and stuff. Walk up and down the driveway. Things, things like that. You utilize what, utilize what you have. Get plenty of sleep. Here it comes again. Sleep. Is critical. Sleep gives the body time to recover, time to relax. So you awake, re so you awake, refresh. 
and, and ready to face another day. Avoid excessive alcohol and drugs. Take regular baths and showers Why someone asks. Not only because it's cleansing, water has a way of nourishing and relaxing and, and, and feeling good on the body. It is refreshing and it's good for you. Nourish your skin now, and this is your total skin, especially your hands. Because with all the sanitizer use, we are suffering from major rough hands these days. And that, that can be a problem. And, and some of us, I mean, in some of us men, we don't necessarily um, take care of our hands. My, my wife bought me a, a hand cream. And it looks quite manly and stuff. So it's not, it's not on you, you know, to pull it out and then because the alcohol and stuff can dry out your hand. Now, you have to make time to unwind because in an average day, we can get very, very, very wound up. A colleague of mine went to pay some bills today, came back quite wound up. And I saw her, she was rather wound up. She had to see some patients. She said to me, I am going to go and sit quietly in this room, recenter myself, because I've just stood up for two hours in a line, listening to people talking all sorts of things and complaining, and it's got me in a bad mood. Okay, she went. She's a Christian lady. She prayed. She stayed for about 20 minutes. She came back, she was a different person. It's important to recenter and sometimes remove ourselves away from stressful situations that we can. And, and doing that, we've got to do other activities that we enjoy. For example, I mean, if this one is possible, this is interesting. Set, set up a time to clear an area in your home where your mind can be more at ease. If you have candles, soft lights, pillows, rugs, cushions, whatever, create a cozy private place to relax your mind. Now, the reality is some of us may not have that. And I, I know people that the only respite is to go in the bathroom and they go in with the radio and perhaps a candle, a scented candle or some scent, whatever, and they, they sit there and, and listen to something and relax their minds. You know, we have to find ways. A relaxed mind is a functional mind. Boredom can happen when you're at home more than you're used to. So here's a, a, a plan. Make a list of activities you can engage in and give them time limits so it will help you to commit to that activity. For example, an hour coloring. Now, listen to this. I've tried it myself. Adult coloring books are available and they are awesome. There are, there are even Bibles available that you can color. Very good, right? So color, got an hour of coloring, 15 minutes of mindfulness. And that's be, mindfulness basically is you're, you're there and you are keeping yourself in the present. You, you're aware of your body, you're aware of you're breathing, you're aware of the air around you, you're aware of the sounds around you, you're aware of the, the, the tensions in your body and you're, you're sitting there and you're relaxing, you're focusing on God's creation and you're relaxing yourself. Most of us don't give ourselves time to do that. We're always somewhere going crazy, somewhere, you know, we go from zero to 60 in a rush, all right? A 20-minute walk, yes, you're still allowed to go to a 20-minute walk. There's wonders. Um, last year, I went to see my surgeon, and this was in the, in the lockdown and, and stuff like that, and he said to me, you know, there are not many patients around, but they're coming. So I brought some weight from home, and when the clients are not around, I do a little workout routine, and I thought that that, was wonderful because that releases the stress of boredom and he's building some muscle and doing something wonderful for his body in the process. Now, along with, uh, to go on with this team, 
have a look at your home and see if there are books that you had that you never got around to read in. Gather them, the books and magazines are over on the spot, and see how many of them you can check off in a short while. So you're setting yourself a little challenge, and of course, you're gathering information. Make a list of all shows or movies you've enjoyed, see which ones you can find to rewatch, or and see what you still like about them. Other and the, reflect on what you like about each one and see if the reasons are different now. It can be fun to revisit the past through TV and, and the film. It's, it's, it's interesting. Try to set a time, try set aside time to do nothing. Yes, nothing. We all have many things to be done, but we can also have a time to do nothing and allow ourselves to be okay with that. I recently set back up, um, and I'm sharing this, I set back up a uh, hammock in my, my garden, and I try as much as possible, I haven't done it yet this week, but for sure on Saturday, to spend at least an hour out there in the evenings. Now, I haven't been able to do it because I've had late evenings and those stuff this week, but I did it last week, and it's very, it's actually very relaxing. I, I sit there, I lie there, I look at the clothes, I breathe, I do nothing, I try to empty myself of all responsibility for that moment, and that's my time to recenter and to recharge myself. Now, if you have free time and you want to fill that time with things that are stimulating for your brain, there are many online opportunities like webinars, tutorials, and there's a website called Coursera and there are wonderful courses on there. If you so desire, you can check that out. It's important also to connect with others. Talk with people you trust about your concerns and feelings. Try not to keep your worries and fears bottled up because they will impact you severely. It can help to schedule time to keep you from being isolated. Schedule a video chat with a friend or loved ones and stick to it. Anticipate that others around you might be struggling and stressed out with the current situation. We must try our best to be patient and supportive. We can get through these tough times even when physically apart. Communicate with, with co-workers, supervisors, employers about job stress while maintaining social distancing. And that's critical because the stress inherent to most jobs seems to have increased. Identify things that cause stress and work together to identify solutions. Talk openly with employers, employees and trade unions about how the pandemic is affecting work Expectations should be communicated clearly to everyone. Ask about how to access mental health resources in your workplace. If you feel that you may be misusing alcohol or other drugs, including prescription drugs as a means of coping, reach out for help. Don't let it get too far. If you are being treated for a mental health condition, continue with your treatment regimen and be aware of new or worsening signs and symptoms and that this leads to increased insight. If someone in your household is being moody and or negative and making it difficult to be around, try some positive self-talk and self-soothing to avoid reacting harshly. Remember to also practice healthy boundaries to give yourself a break from negativity. If you're wondering what the future will hold and are feeling overwhelmed, take a moment to do a mindfulness exercise. Sometimes the best thing you can do for your minds and bodies is to bring ourselves back to the present moment. And like I said before, sometimes we are, we are living something all in the future that has not happened. If you're in a position to help others, whether tangibly or intangibly, do so. But be aware of your own limitations. Do not stretch yourself too thin then uh, to make the situation stressful for you. It's important to, to connect with your community and your, or your faith-based organization, right? 
and, and I like what you are doing as, as, as a church, as a unit. You're keeping that connection. You're, you're seeking help and you're seeking professional um, intervention in terms of making people aware. And that is, that is good, right? Um, it's important to do that. Um, take time out of the day to check in with people you care about to reassure them that they are not alone. Remind them that God is in control, and if possible, you can speak a word of encouragement in, in their lives. I, I often think about the upper room when the disciples were on they were actually on lockdown. But they didn't realize that Jesus was with them until he made an appearance. They thought they were alone, they were, they were, they were worried. They, well, Thomas had, they had told Thomas they had seen him, and Thomas had said, no, he got to see him in one of rats and ran. Because there's usually uncertainty, there was some uncertainty about him where Thomas was concerned, but he appeared and he quelled all that uncertainty. He might not appear to us like Thomas, but he might appear in our spirits and our hearts, and we have to open ourselves to that. In terms of work, be fortified by remembering the importance of your work. Remind yourself that despite the current challenges and the frustrations, your role is a noble calling, whether how humble. Make time to recognize and acknowledge the efforts and sacrifices made by colleagues. Together, all are stronger. And this is not a time for competition, but this is the time for, for complimenting. All right. This this next point goes out to the leaders and the and the supervisors and whatever else. Take care of your staff. Those amongst you who are in leadership should strive to maintain crit a critical infrastructure, knowing that they may that your infrastructure may require modification to existing strategies, tactics, and rules. All right. And this comes under the heading. There's a new normal. So we have to be open and adaptable and adjustable, right? Practical application should be geared towards protecting to the highest degree possible. And you're protecting staff from stress and poor mental health, right? Adjust staff and procedures and schedule where, schedules where possible. When able and within applicable, applicable legal limits, rotate workers from high stress to lower stress functions and areas. Partner in experienced workers with more experienced colleagues who will provide support, monitor stress, and reinforce safety practices. Offer access to psychological support, provide staff with social psychological supports, and we, we, I give you the number for the mental health hotline. All right. Remember that it and prioritize the, the, the importance of mental health. And, and I reiterate here, there's no health without mental health. Okay. Create an environment of open communication and you are encouraging your staff to speak openly about their concerns. You provide brief regular forms to update staff on the status of work practices and how management is addressing challenges. You're providing mechanism for staff to ask questions and encourage peer support amongst colleagues. And it's important to incorporate guidance about stress in your general practice. Emotional distress and anxiety are common during pandemics, such as the COVID-19 we are experiencing. It's important to help persons acknowledge that this exists and help normalize it. Now, let me say something here. There's a, there's a, a school of thought that says no situation is stressful. But we in inadvertently stress ourselves out by how we automatically react to situations. Okay, now if we take, for example, the teaching of Christ, be, be anxious for nothing, I will never leave you or, or, or forsake you. And there were some, you would put up some, some passages early. If we seek to those and we look at those, it will give us a sense of peace, right? A sense of peace. And um, the situation itself 
may not necessarily change, but the way we view the situation will change and, and we can have peace of mind, right? Remember, we have to use basic strategies to recognize signs of distress, such as worry, fear, and how to and put things in place, how to reduce them, including healthy diet, talking to a loved one, etc. Okay, now we've come to the end of that presentation. I will now accommodate some questions. Thank you so very much, Brother Lennox. And I'm sure that we definitely had a lot to, to digest. We definitely had a solid meal this evening as we looked at, at dealing and coping with stress, understanding what mental illness is, and really developing coping mechanisms, especially during lockdowns and even in this pandemic, as we are flooded with all sorts of emotions related to, to everything that we're experiencing in this, what we like to call new normal. And yes. I think you've definitely given us tools to add to our toolbox this evening to help us to really work through all of the issues that we may be facing. So I want to say thank you very much you. For, for your intervention this evening. And I pray God's continued blessing upon you.